Welcome to the study of entertainment education, a topic that has fascinated both of us for many years. Uh, this video is to accompany our book on the topic of entertainment education. Its full title is Entertainment Education, a Communication Strategy for Social Change. Uh, the book is published by Lawrence Earlbaum Associates. My name is Arvind Singhal. I'm based in the School of Interpersonal Communication at Ohio University. And for the last 15 years or so, I've had a big interest in the area of entertainment education, sparked primarily by my former professor, Dr. Everett Rogers. I'm Everett Rogers. Uh, I'm now a uh, faculty member in communication at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. Uh, but uh, the story of our interest in this subject goes back to when we were both at the University of Southern California in the Annenberg School for Communication. And this would have been about 1985. That's correct. Uh, how did you first get interested in entertainment education? How did that begin for you, Arvind? It actually began in your class on international communication and national development uh, when uh, you showed a videotape of an Indian soap opera called Hamlog. Here was your home country. And uh, uh, the soap opera I knew was very popular because I had spent time in India in the summer. And uh, I remembered how my 75-year-old grandmother was glued to the TV set and uh, didn't make too much conversation while this program was on. And then after the program was over, she would talk about it endlessly. And I could see something happening there. Obviously, she was being entertained by this story of an Indian family going through the various trials and tribulations. Uh, and uh, it seemed that she was learning something from it as well as were many of our other family members. So then when you saw a videotape of one of the episodes from Homlog, We People, uh, you immediately began to get ideas about if this thing is indeed so special, having these strong effects on people like your grandmother, um, how could we study it and learn more about it? And that's, I guess, how our journey began with respect to trying to evaluate the effects of Hamlog in India first and then later followed by many other research evaluations. My interest had begun somewhat earlier. Uh, this would have been about the mid-70s, and at that time I was teaching at Stanford University. Uh, a master's student at Stanford from Mexico uh, had worked for Televisa, the uh, Mexican television company. And uh, in his master's thesis, one of the chapters dealt with Simplemente Maria, mm -hmm. uh, this rather fabulous uh, and yet to this day one of the great soap operas of all time in Latin America. Uh, so his chapter was about the impacts that it had in Mexico mm -hmm. uh, at the time that he worked in the research division uh, for Televisa, which broadcast this Peruvian uh, telenovela or soap opera in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, I kept urging him to get more data to, uh, I said, for such an important event, must have had a lot written about it, must have had a lot of studies done about it, uh, it was throughout Latin America where it was broadcast, and he kept coming up with nothing other than his own remembrances and some interviews that he was able to do with knowledgeable people in Mexico. Uh, so I had been interested in why this genre 
this idea of entertainment education, mm -hmm. um, had such strong impacts. Uh, but I had been frustrated in the case of Supplementary Maria. Well, you eventually, in later years, solved that frustration by going to Lima and uh, reconstructing a great deal of the story uh, 25 years later? Is 25 that right? years later, in the mid-1990s, mm -hmm. of what was 25 years ago the most popular program of all times, probably, in Latin America. And it represents, at least in our recounting of the series of historical events, the evolution of entertainment education. Uh, it was a key event. It wasn't intentional education, entertainment education, uh, but it was entertainment education by our definition. And it was very influential on Miguel Sabido, the Televisa official who uh, became intrigued by Simplementi Maria. And out of that eventually came his own television soap operas based on a formula or a means of producing them and designing them uh, based on social science theory that uh, has come to be copied very widely. This, mm -hmm. of course, is Miguel Sabido, And incidentally, Miguel Sabido had been the boss of the Stanford MA student that got me interested mm -hmm. in this whole thing in the first place. In 1963, 30 years ago, Miguel Sabido, a recent graduate of the School of Philosophy and Literature at the University of Mexico, eager to contribute to the social service of his country, formed a group for communication studies aimed at researching the possible social use of commercial soap operas. The first task of the group was to spend each day watching the 500 chapters of Simplemente Maria, a soap opera that had an amazing social impact that had not previously been studied. This was the first study in Latin America based on research and not hearsay. It was based on the dramatic theory developed by Eric Bentley at the University of Columbia and the archetype theory developed by Carl Jung. Once this study had been completed, Sabido asked the Mexican Social Security Institute to sponsor the efforts of this communication research group. The outcome of these three years of professional interdisciplinary studies was a theoretical framework used by the Mexican Institute of Communication Studies, created in 1969. The methodology consisted of a theoretical framework, production procedures, and evaluation systems. The theories involved were dramatic theory, archetype and stereotype theory, social learning theory, communication theory, and the triune brain theory. Dramatic theory. This theory divides all drama work into seven groups with special characteristics. Tragedy, comedy, farce, tragic comedy, pieces, moral plays, and melodrama. Melodrama is always a great reflection on good and evil. Every soap opera is a melodrama, a lengthy reflection on good and evil that lasts from six to eight months. It discusses moral problems affecting the audience by means of live images right in the viewer's home. This is the reason for its world's success. Melodrama features confrontations between good and evil personified by characters that the audience immediately identifies, and it accepts them or rejects them emotionally. This confrontation is witnessed by hesitant characters through moral discussions over several months and the viewers are the main hesitant characters. It is not true that soap operas alienate the audience. On the contrary, viewers need to get deeply involved in the discussion of values in order to enjoy it. Therefore, it is an ideal means of openly and publicly discussing family planning problems. Based on Jung's theory, the group put together a table of basic physiological archetypes. For the female, they are the unborn, the girl, the teen, the woman, the mother, the senior, and the dead. For the male, they are the unborn, the boy, the teen, the man, the father, the senior, and the dead. 
These basic archetypes and their composition are the foundation used to design the icons of the accepting, rejecting, and hesitant characters representing the target groups we are trying to reach. The social learning theory of Dr. Albert Bandura at Stanford University has proved that human beings learn through direct experience and vicarious learning that is conditioned by positive and negative reinforcement. This theory allows behavior patterns to be presented in the soap opera so that the public will learn to use the infrastructure of services that enable them to practice family planning. The triune brain theory proposed by Dr. Henry Lavorie of the Sorbonne and Dr. David McLean of the University of Virginia states that the human brain has three centers for processing signals that the body receives from outside, the intellectual center, the emotional center, and the instinctual center. Through this theory, a soap opera can be given an emotional tone and an intellectual tone that allows the lineal transmission of information to present behavior models, that is, the concept of entertainment education. Communication theory, which has received contributions from various researchers, establishes that the communication circuit of a commercial soap opera includes a communicator, the manufacturer of a product, has a message, buy my product. This communicator uses a medium, which is the commercial inserted in the soap opera, to reach a receiver or potential buyer. And the only response desired is the purchase of the product. The methodology proposes adding a second communicator, which must necessarily be a moral authority that endorses the discussion of values being presented to the audience. Obviously, this second communicator has a second message. Discuss the possibility of family planning freely and at length with your partner. And if you decide to use family planning, this is how the infrastructure can help you do so easily and methodically. Thus, the interaction of the five theories provides a theoretical and moral framework approved by the competent authorities and may become a system of production procedures such as general planning of the soap opera, writing the chapters, and pre- and post-production breakdown. The following results can be achieved with this methodology. One, maintain the high ratings of commercial soap operas and consequently be able to systematically reach large audiences. Two, avoid the use of pamphlets and political propaganda, since the methodology is based on open and democratic discussion conducted within the very homes of the members of the target group. Three, collaborate with both public and private authorities and infrastructures to help solve problems such as overpopulation, migration from the countryside to the city, adult education, preventive medicine, the role of women in modern society, and so forth. Four, conduct evaluations that provide feedback for the original theoretical framework so that the research now being conducted in Kenya and India can confirm the research conducted in Mexico 20 years ago. The research projects can strengthen each other and work toward the formation of a universal system of technological transmission that will benefit society worldwide. With the theoretical framework already organized, Sabido went to the television corporation Televisa, the company where he was then vice president of research, and proposed that the theory be applied in several soap operas that would be evaluated individually and as a whole in order to complete and test the entire methodology. The first soap opera was dedicated to discussing the value of adult education and promoting the infrastructure that would provide services for adults to continue studying. Ven conmigo. Chapters, 280. Number of interviews in the research, 600. Results. Quantitative, 1. Average commercial rating, 32.6 points. 2. 
one million people enrolled in the infrastructure, ten times more than in the previous year. Qualitative. One, it was found that the value of adult education was strongly reinforced in people who had already completed primary school, and they automatically became social promoters for the value and helped to create a favorable social climate. Two, it was found that the value also became stronger in people who had not seen the soap opera, but were close to those who had. The effect of the social climate. Three, it was found that there was a change of opinion and behavior in the target group, which was expressed by their enrolling in the National Plan for Adult Education. Consequently, it was proved that the social learning theory of Dr. Bandura worked very well within the soap opera format. All the working hypotheses developed beforehand were confirmed, and the following conclusions were reached. One, entertainment education soap operas can coalesce and function with conventional entertainment soap operas on a commercial medium that measures success in audience ratings and subsequent income. Two, unlike the budget drain represented by most social and strictly educational communication materials that are sponsored by government and other public institutions, entertainment education soap operas can generate income from advertising and foreign sales. Three, viewers of the entertainment education soap opera perceive the program's educational content. Many viewers spontaneously describe the entertainment education soap opera as better than other soap operas because of this educational content. Four, viewers most favor the characters in entertainment education soap operas who are intended to portray the positive side as opposed to the negative side of the pro-social behavior that is being promoted. Five, viewers watch and understand the epilogues that follow each episode of an entertainment education soap opera. Six, viewers of entertainment education soap operas express attitudes that are more favorable toward the pro-social behavior that is being promoted than those non-viewers express. Seven, viewers of entertainment education soap operas have more information about the pro-social behavior that is being promoted and the relevant organizations in the public infrastructure than non-viewers have. Eight, during the period that the entertainment education soap opera is broadcast, there are significant increases in phone calls new clients, and volunteers to pertinent organizations in the public infrastructure that are represented in the soap opera. In 1976, the Mexican Institute of Communication Studies came into contact with David Poindexter, who has played an essential role in promoting this methodology throughout the world. In 1987, Population Communication International, PCI, Poindexter's agency, prepared a chart that clearly showed the historic influence that these soap operas had on reducing the population explosion in Mexico. Sabido's methodology has found a sound way to use mass media without adversely affecting ratings or sales. It is based on scientific research, which allows systematic evaluation of results, and nearly 30 years of use and testing support it. I believe that all communication researchers in the world, producers, writers, and directors, wish to serve their society. This is Mexico City, a thriving, modern, hectic metropolis, much like every other big city in the world. A place of sharp contrasts, where awesome wealth coexists with lacerating poverty, where the carefree laughter of the wealthy clashes with the sad and desperate eyes of children who have forgotten how to cry, where at the end of the day, while some return to the warmth of a welcoming home, 
Thousands of homeless children seek shelter wherever they can. This is the city where Francisco lives, a prominent businessman who has discovered that true happiness does not come from material possessions, but from the joy of sharing. ¿Por qué ahora defiende al ladrón este? Yo no defiendo a nadie. Ya le dije que se equivocó de persona. Ahora si no le molesta, mi estimado amigo, mi sobrino y yo vamos a seguir paseando. Vámonos. Me va a pegar. No, hijo, no te voy a pegar. His wife Lucila is a vain and selfish woman who only cares about the frivolous pleasures of high society. Pues Rosy, no creas que me va a ganar. Y ya verás, papá. Voy a deshacerme de ella. No vuelvas a molestar a Francisco, porque no va a haber poder humano que te salve de este alfiler. ¿Entendiste, niña? And who fiercely opposes her husband's desire to build a shelter for abused and homeless children. However, Francisco will find in young Veronica the support he needs to fulfill his dream. ¿Quiere que le eche las cartas españolas? No, gracias. Bueno, entonces el tarot o el I Ching. ¿Quiere que le haga su horóscopo? Le voy a leer su mano. Mexico City is also where Leonor lives. A brave woman who, after losing both her daughter and granddaughter in a tragic accident, falls into a dark well of despair. Rejected by society, she will find a new reason to live as she gets involved with a group of homeless children. Leonor will evolve into a passionate supporter of children's rights. As brave and determined as Rosie is, a small girl from a wealthy family who discovers that there is such a thing as children's rights and who won't give up until she becomes an active collaborator of UNICEF. Rosie is living proof that age is not an obstacle when it comes to helping others. No One's Children is also the story of four children, the victims of a cold and heartless society that treats them as little more than a nuisance. These are the homeless children, the nameless ones who risk their lives every second of the day in the turmoil of the big city amidst the traffic and the noise, the violence and degradation. From the refreshing inspiration of Miguel Sabido, a story that will open our eyes to a reality we can ill afford to ignore. A drama with a poignant message that will steer our conscience and awaken us to the tragic life of misery, hunger, and crime of these children we call no one's children. With the brilliant performance of Silvia Derbez, the star in all of Televisa's dramas of social awareness, and the first-time television appearance of Rosy Montenegro, a real-life UNICEF collaborator, Televisa proudly presents this new link in its series of telenovelas with a social character by Miguel and Irene Sabido, who have inspired many positive changes in our society. Children are the future. All children. No one's children. If only it were fiction. What is entertainment education? Um, entertainment education is <coughs> primarily the idea of putting entertainment and education together so as to reap the benefits of each. So simply put, uh, you purposely design programs that entertain as well as uh, educate. Uh, the idea is, of course, not a new idea. The idea has been around for thousands of years. You what, can what is new are the specific techniques of doing it. And I think that's what uh, human society has learned in the last, let's say, 20 years from these more than 75 different applications of the entertainment education strategy. Uh, many of which, of course, are documented uh, in our uh, book, beginning with, of course, the landmark experience of Simplemente Maria. Chapter two. Chapter two, Miguel Sabido. Chapter, chapter three, three. Hamlog. Chapter four, and so on and so forth. I think what is most intriguing about the entertainment education strategy to me uh, is its versatility. Entertainment, it's pervasive, persuasive, popular, passionate, personal, participatory.